into a torture room, strangely missing the real Jersey. Because remember, he says that the only people in the room are E and P and Fossen, the victim, and him. So he happens to be there when the real Jersey isn't there. Well, that's not true because he is the real Jersey. But he, uh, according to him, in this unlucky scenario, the real Jersey happens to be 510 and 220, which is so close to his 511, 227. Think of it, two Jerseys, two men that go by Jersey in the same hotel room on the same night, passing up like ships that don't see each other, and amazingly, they look like twins. So he must be the most unlucky person ever. And you must believe that battle is amazingly bad at reading a room. Because he walks into the, in the middle of that hellhole torture scene, he's there for minutes, and he walks out thinking, whew, that's some strange homosexual shit. That is unreasonable. It's unfathomable after seeing a taser and the facial beatings it's unfathomable that someone could walk out and think that that was consensual. It's unfathomable. But you'd have to believe that for him not to be Jersey. Three, Battle either has invisibility powers or he is Flash Gordon. Because he is nowhere, well, assuming he's not the real Jersey, he's nowhere on the surveillance video. <laughs> This isn't about Dan Radford. You have every right to watch every second of that video and you can take it. He's nowhere on that surveillance video. So unlike everyone else who walks out of room 105, he can't be seen. Or maybe it was in that one second clip that defense counsel showed us. We waited so long to watch between 2051-16 and then <gasps> it jumped to 2051-18. Did he make it? Remember, he says to Detective Flores that he walks all the way out to the front and he leaves on the street from the front. So in that one second, he makes it out to the front. Why is Benjamin Battle not on the video? Why is Benjamin Battle not on the video? Well, he is on the video. He's Jersey in the video. There are only five people who walk in and out of room 105 between the time that the torture starts and when it stops. Or actually, there are, there's only one, there's two people that walk in and out, but there's only five possibilities because of who's come in and who's come out. When Letterman walks in, who Collins says is Ernest Bright, when he walks in, there's the three people inside. That puts four. That's when the, the torture starts. The only other people to walk in and out during that time period, watch it on the video, are battle a few times, and when Fawson goes out for a five minute time period. There is no other way, there's no other um, possibility. So the video surveillance alone, watch it, watch that hour and a half. There is no other person that walks in there. Battle says he walks in there. Inherently his story can't be right. He says he walks in there. But the video surveillance shows, according to his story, he didn't, unless he's the guy wearing the jersey. Fourth, you also have to believe this, that Fawson is a special kind of stupid. Think through this. We've heard these horror stories, and it's true, about Patrick Shipley. Patrick Shipley will have his own day in court. Patrick Shipley's not the issue here today. But, Patrick Shipley's horrendousness, right? In opening statement, defense counsel said, and in closing statement now, that Battle is the fall guy. That Fawson is so scared of the real Jersey that he's going to throw Mr. Battle under the bus. There's a huge problem with that. Evidently, He's willing to throw Shipley under the bus, who Shipley says is his best friend, 
But in any case, he's willing to throw Shipley under the bus, who is making people paraplegics or whatever. He's willing to throw E under the bus, who Shane Pollan says is Ernest Bright, because remember, he says that he went over to Ernest Bright's house. He knows Ernest Bright. He says his name. So he's willing to throw cage torturer guy under the bus and testify against him. But he's not willing to throw the guy under the bus that used the shaver. He's willing to throw the torturer under the bus and the taser under the bus, but he's not willing to throw this third guy under the bus. Well, is he scared or is he not scared? He's scared, but he's scared for himself. So now he's acting in his own best interests rather than that of the other individuals there. Why would he correctly identify two people and falsely identify the third, be willing to testify, as he said, against Shipley and, and, uh, and E, but go after, set an elaborate trap. They just, there happened to be two jerseys. And the second jersey just happened to be there for a five minute time period in the room and just got unlucky. And so, yeah, he's got a perfect fall guy. It doesn't make any sense. If he's going to testify against Patrick Shipley, who's a gang member, then he's not creating somehow an elaborate story. He doesn't look smart enough to create an elaborate story anyway. Five, you have to disbelieve Shane Collins or think that he was so far mistaken. Shane Collins was adamant about in his recorded interview months ago that you heard and on the stand on Wednesday, he testified to you that there were only five men in the room and that during the torture period, no other man came or left. It's not a minutia. That's not a small fact that he says there was no one else. He says there was no one else. Battle could not have come in. He says that everyone in the room, specifically, he says everyone in the room was torturing him. I asked, was anyone not participating? No, he said. There were no innocent bystanders. And six, as we've discussed, you have to disbelieve Dan Redford. Either she was grossly negligent or she was lying. For she testified that after studying the video from 2.30 on and without knowing the facts of this case, she followed everyone in and out of the room of, of 105. And you can too, by the way. And they were all accounted for. Now, think how well this video surveillance matches with what Shane Collins' story about P and Foxtrot being there with him was. That the two were there when Shane arrived, that they were there for some period of time, that then Letterman came, then E came, that the torture began, it was soon thereafter that Jersey came, that Jersey came and Jersey left, going and coming back, and that Jersey left just before security came, in fact, six minutes before security came. If you have any doubts about her work, you can watch it yourself, the entire video, it's in evidence, and it will verify her every word. If the other elements have been proven, if you can't believe in twin jerseys coincidentally being in the same room without actually seeing each other, then battle is guilty. Or if you don't believe it's reasonable that battle could walk into a group of men beating and tasing another and walk away thinking it's just consensual sex, then battle is guilty. If you don't believe that battle could cross the parking lot in one second, that it cuts between two clips, then Jersey battle is guilty. If you can't understand or believe why Fawson would snitch on Patrick Shipley, the dangerous Patrick Shipley, and snitch on Ernest Bright, the kid torturer, evidently, but is willing to do that the other way with battle, then battle is guilty. Why would he say the truth about two people and a lie about the third, the scariest ones? Or if you believe that Collins, or if you believe Collins, that there was no innocent bystanders, if you believe Collins, 
that there were no innocent bystanders,